Greetings, Skill Incarnate bringing you all the latest indie gaming goodness. Welcome back as we check out another indie game. This time we're looking at Moonlighter. This game comes from 11-Bit Studios, the guys behind the legendary 4X strategy game Frostpunk. If you haven't seen it, go and check out my review on Frostpunk. Moonlighter is an action RPG and town management simulator. It takes inspiration from games like The Legend of Zelda, Stardew Valley and their previous game Children of Mortar. Now I don't need to spruik this game too much, it's already sold 2 million copies. So I'm going to show you the first part of the campaign and prove why this is a game you should keep your eye on. Let's check out Moonlighter. Now normally I would do a first impressions of the game, but I really couldn't wait to play it. I've really been looking forward to checking out Moonlighter, and I've done a little bit of upgrading of the store. I have a humble little storefront here. I have some items to sell, but we're running low. And so it is time to venture into the depths again. Now at this stage I've only managed to up, uh, upgrade two stores at the moment. I've got the blacksmith, who sells some extremely overpriced items and the potion seller he sells only the finest potions mm. now unfortunately I'm out of out of components to craft more but I do have a few on me and a goal is to search the dungeons in order to find the loot and goodies to sell in the store Eventually, I'll have enough money to upgrade my weapons. At the moment, I've only got a basic set of weapons. Nothing to write home about. But we're going to try and venture as far as we can within the dungeons and get as much loot as we can. Now, the dungeons are procedurally generated. You'll get a different experience every time. And I do recommend if you don't, if you don't have it on the console, do get yourself a decent controller. You can play with a keyboard and mouse, but it is a little clunky and I don't recommend doing it if you can avoid it. It does help to have a bit of a knowledge of the enemies. Oh, there we go. I've got myself a new weapon. Training short sword. Okay, it's just the same as the one I'm currently using. That's okay, we can sell it. Anything we find that we don't need is a fair game to sell. Now these blobs, despite looking fairly innocent, are actually pretty nasty because they can trap you. And it's often better to use your range of weapons where you can. Certain enemies are very weak against certain attacks. We're doing quite well, even though I've took a little bit of damage. I do have some healing potions. I'm going to try and save them where I can. So... I was attacked by a moving rock today. Can you imagine? A rock that moves. I did what any sensible person would do in this situation and smacked it back. It shattered on the ground, leaving behind a stone heart. A core as we've come to call it. It's one of the many unique treasures that can only be found in this dungeon. Dropped by a guard, unique to only this dungeon. I have to say, each of these dungeons have a peculiar environment. A culture all its own. So basically, when you venture into the dungeon, every single person will see their own version of it. You can't join your friends, you can't go in as a group. It is an individual challenge for each person. Now some of the enemies are more challenging than others, and really it's often the environment that's your greatest challenge. Bottomless pit. It's a puzzle, puzzle, 
puddles of slime and acid. And various traps scattered around the dungeon. Oop. As well as dangerous creatures like this. The bottomless pits are... They pose another problem in addition to killing you. Any enemies that or items that enemies drop that are near a bottomless pit are lost for good. So it is often best to avoid. Oh, let's get away from this guy. Time to bust out the, the trusty bow. You can fight these guys with a sword and shield, but given we, our resources are so, so scarce, I'm going to try and play it safe. Uh-oh. Okay, now this is a different biome. We don't have access to this yet. But these environments are often full of goodies. We'll be able to unlock this later on. Now, I've already used a few of our potions. I'm going to try and play it safe. We're nearly out. Now, you can dissolve these items for a fair amount of money, which I'm going to do. So anything that we can't use right now, I'm going to I'm also going to try and stack things because sometimes the the game won't let you stack items. Oh, okay, we don't have anything. There we go. Certain items can only be placed at certain points in your backpack, which means you do have to prioritise the different items that you're going to take with you. We're up to the first golem, the boss of the game, but seeing as I've, I'm doing quite well, I've got plenty of health. Really. Killing these slime enemies gives us the red slime, which we can use to craft ourselves. Oh, hello, yes. Now, our goal is to keep on the move, fill this guy full of arrows. Damn it. Pretty tough, but as long as you keep on the move and you use the bow, he's pretty easy to kill. Now you can kill him with a sword, but he's got a pretty dangerous close range attack, so you're gonna have to remove some of these items again. It's often a bit of a bit of a balancing act, trying to make sure you've got enough good. So what I can do is we're gonna sell the items that are not worth a lot. Sticks and roots and that are useful for crafting, but they don't have much application outside of basic item crafting. And we're here for we're here for cheddar. We're here for cheddar. We need anything that's going to make us some money. So jump into the healing pool here. We can keep on keep our potions for now.
I'm going to stay over here where it's safe and take out these weaker enemies. There's a bit of an art to the combat in this game too. Once you figure out some of the enemy's timings, you're going to die a fair bit until you figure it out, but... Part of the fun of the game, much like Dark Souls and similar roguelike games, is overcoming the different enemies, figuring out their attack patterns and learning to capitalize on them. Oh, damn it. This is what I was trying to avoid. Now, with, with this guy by himself, I can kill him fairly easily. There we go. Yeah, the blobs are pretty tough when they're by themselves, but most of the blob enemies will cough up that red, the red goop that will give you crafting. Oh, look at that. Oh, yes, we want... We definitely want this. Now this is a crafting, a rune tool. So we've found some very, very useful items. I'm going to die some of these. This chest is full of valuable items. These things we can use, these books, very, very useful. Oops. Excellent. Now we need to be careful. I definitely don't want to die because these artifacts are worth a ton. Look at all this metal. Oh man, we're gonna make a ton out of this. So metal's worth an absolute fortune in the store. Oh, look at it. I, I, I don't know what to, I don't know what to keep and what to take. There's so much good stuff here. We'll pop a potion and we'll check one more room, but I think it's, oh no. Well, we've got tons and tons of red slime. We'll be able to make lots of potions with all the goodies that we've found. Now, these balls are really dangerous, but except when they're we're stuck in confined spaces, they can't move. They can only move by getting a bit of bit of momentum up and then they crash into you but that was a really bad spot for that um, that enemy to be in let's see what else I can I can ditch I mean everything in here is so good you can see already we've made almost a thousand dollars so Damn it. So I need to get it to crash into, into something. Ah, there we go. It needs to crash into a wall. Oh, wow. We're actually... We're fully loaded. Everything in here is runes or books or valuables. I think I'm going to head back to town. Because we have, we can use this to upgrade our gear. So this is too valuable to to leave behind. Let's head back. It is the early game, so wow, we did lose a few items, but we kept our 
We kept our rune spells. We did lose our, our tome, unfortunately. It's random. You, you, you can't bring everything back to town. You are going to lose a few items. So often when you've got an inventory full of good stuff, you want to try and head back before you you have you know, a full inventory full of valuable items to minimize the chance of you, if you're losing stuff that you need. So now I'm back in town, it's time to enter the, the shopping portion of the game. So we're going to open the store. And we're going to start selling some items. I'm going to drop some here. These actually aren't worth much. I must have picked them up by accident. But the rest of the items here, red gems, iron bars. We've got some golem hearts we can sell. Let's get... They're very happy with those. I think I've got the prices pretty well sorted out. And if people come in and they see something they don't like, you'll, you'll be able to tell. The reaction from the customer will give you the information you need. There we go. And I don't know what the crystal rocks are worth, but I know these are worth a ton. I can probably jack this up a bit. And again, this comes from experience. The best way to do it is to sell one item, see what people say. If they're happy with the price, raise it up a little bit. Just don't get greedy. So no one's biting yet. No? Okay, so sometimes it takes people a while to decide. Oh, he's happy with that. Excellent. And you can see here we're, we're making a fair bit of money. We're, we started on 2,000 gold. And I'm already on nearly 4,000. So they're not liking the price of that iron. Let's see if we can drop down a bit. I can't sell any less than that. I'm practically giving it away. Okay. And I'll get some of this fabric. We'll chuck that on there and see what people say. When when someone comes near an item, they'll they'll get a reaction and they'll either be happy or sad, and then you can just adjust your there we go. So by adjusting the price of those gems, I can now sell them. People are happy to pay a little bit less. Obviously everyone's happy to pay a bit less, but I have to I've got a business to run too. Chuck the last of these down. And we'll chuck those on there. We've made a fair bit of money, and my goal is to make roughly around 5,000 gold, because then I'll be able to buy a upgraded weapon. And more importantly, some more potions, because I'm nearly out. Beautiful people happy with that. We got some happy customers, we're gonna get some money. And I think with that, I have sold all the and no one seems to want iron at the moment. I don't really have anything else left to sell. The stuff I want is I mean I could probably sell this. See what this is worth. I don't know why no one likes that iron. I'm practically... Look at this. It's two, two gold. Really? I can't really sell it any less than two gold.
beautiful. Well, I think that's just about it. Everyone's left for the day. I don't really have anything left to sell. All the rest of these items I need, they're, they're crafting components. Actually, I can... I can sell the, the golem hearts. There you go. You can have a golem heart. Too expensive. Well, you don't want to know what I went through to get those. I think that's about it for the day. I'm going to close the store because I don't have anything else left to sell. And you can see here, we made almost 3,000 gold. It's time to spend it down at the blacksmith. Hmm. Now, hopefully I have... Ah, okay, I don't have Soldier Short Sword. Do I have the... Oh, I can make a new bow. That would be handy. Because I do use the bow a fair bit. Let's do that. Yes. Because I often use the bow when I'm, I've got my back against the wall. So let's equip our new toy. Excellent. Oh, it upgrades your bow. Okay. Excellent. So what we've done, I'm going to head down and get some healing potions, and then we are all set. From the potion seller. I'm going to make as many of those as I can. I think ten will be enough. Excellent. So we've got some... I've got a new weapon. I've got a set of potions. We've made a ton of money. I've still got a thousand gold left. We can head over here and see what sort of upgrades we've got. So, yeah, we, we need we need a fair bit of money for that. But that's okay. I think for, for this, we've made a fair bit of experience today. We've got some new weapons and gear. And we're all set up for our next foray into the dungeon with some better gear and some, some more potions. And I hope that you enjoyed this look at Moonlighter. Let me know if you want to see more. I would love to continue playing this fantastic game. I cannot recommend it enough. Go and check it out if you're a fan of 11-bit's previous game, Children of Mortar, or if you're a fan of Zelda-like games in general. This is a fantastic mix of RPG and town management. It's a, a, a friend, family-friendly game too. So if you have young kids and they want to play something with a bit of challenge, this is definitely a really good contender. So if you enjoyed this, leave me a like, leave me a subscribe, big thanks to 11bit Studios, and hopefully you'll join me next time when we check out another, another indie game. Until then, Skill Incarnate out.